Hello everyone and welcome to another video here today. We're actually going to be covering Yawn here with Amir. How are you doing, Sam Amir? I'm doing very good. Getting to watch Yawn. Uh, I think the first character that I had tried to main and instantly gave up on is uh, it's very fun to see. Oh, interesting. I have not yet been a Yawn player. Uh, not a character that's been on my list of characters I've like personally played. But definitely have seen a lot of good performance coming out from this character. So just to give a little bit of understanding for everyone that does not know uh, Yon as a character straight off the bat. Let me go over some of his stuff. He's got his passive unyielding. So how this works is Yon gains a stack of unyielding each time he deals damage. And when he has at least five stacks. And you can see that under his HP bar there. His next basic skill consumes a stack and enhances it. Reducing the cooldown of his basic abilities. So his first ability, Knee Strike, uh, makes it so that Yon deals damage in front of him uh, to enemies within range and slowing them. Reactivating it lets him use Leaping Knee. So you can press your Q2, which then makes Yon attack with his knee, dealing damage and knocking enemies airborne. If this is enhanced, so if he's got five more, five, at least five stacks of his passive, hitting the enemy will reset the cooldown of Bob and Weave, which we'll go over here shortly. His second skill, Tomahawk Roundhouse, is Yon sweeps the area in front of him with a kick and deals damage within range. Enemies in the outer cone of this will actually be knocked back, and if they're knocked into terrain, they're stunned. If he's at enhanced mode, it deals bonus damage and knocks enemies, all enemies back regardless of range. So you don't have to aim and hit that outer cone. If they're right in front of you, it'll still send them flying backwards. And for the third skill, Bob and Weave, this is your dash. This lets you dash forward, enhancing your next auto. If you hit Knee Strike or Tomahawk Roundhouse Kick after dashing, it will heal him. And he can bob and weave while using Tomahawk Roundhouse. So you can actually reposition your knockbacks that way. If this is enhanced, it just reduces the cooldown of bob and weave so you can use it faster. And lastly is his ultimate, which we just saw is the Tetragon. And this summons a square ring, granting him passive stacks of his unyielding every second and enemies that touch the ropes are slowed they take damage and if you knock enemies back into the ropes they're actually sent back to the center of the ring and the ropes that disappear upon contact so that's a little bit of the basics of yawn there yeah he's a uh, seems like a very complex character just because of the amount of options you have you can start using two Q's and then use a W, throw an E in the middle of all of this, you're pressing all, but realistically you get this groove down, you start to figure out what abilities kind of work into what abilities. Um, one of my favorites is always just get that empowered Q online and then use E and then you're able to kind of reset this E because as long as you empower the first Q, the second Q will be empowered as well which means that you'll always get that reset as long as you're connecting it. Yeah, yeah. very um, important that you land the abilities for sure. Mm -hmm. But it makes it easy to kind of be this really mobile, uh, not exactly tank, but bruiser that's uh, able to just really disrupt fight. For sure. Now, I have seen a few tank yawns, but I definitely don't think that is his go-to playstyle. He's definitely more of that bruiser brawler, more damage oriented character. And we can even see it there. You know, we get the knock up into the wall stun. And then Gare, we just try to actually do it. We use the knee strike, but now actually get the knock up with the leaping. So yeah, a lot of mobility on this character, being able to just put a bunch of pressure out. Yeah, we see so many times he's just using this E, especially if he gets this empowered E off, then he's reducing the cooldown of his other abilities. If he gets the empowered Q off, then he's resetting his E, which he's then he's using empowered E to reset or reduce the cooldown of his other abilities. And it's just this constant combo of empowered E or empowered Q, and then you use the other one and you just cycling these two abilities through, which I think might be his favorite combos. For sure. I mean, it's very satisfying to watch, like watching him weave around and just dash a bunch it is definitely really really satisfying and one of the things also noticing here is that we actually have three yawns in this game very very uncommon for us to have multiple of the same character that we're covering in one lobby but 
this character right now, at least in this match, is very, very popular. Yeah, I do think that Yon is a bit underrated currently. Um, I think people are looking at a lot of amp tanks, or I guess amp drain tanks, also known as Jasua. Um, or they're looking at just like gear tanks. This bruiser role is phasing out a bit. Um, we're seeing a lot less people play Kenneth. Um, obviously, I think the Aiden build isn't as bruiser as it used to be. Um, I think they're building a lot more damage. Um, we're kind of losing a lot of people on playing these, and now we're seeing just the Alonzo or the tank Echions. And I think it's because supports are becoming a lot more prevalent. Yeah, I think I think it's a little bit of a mix of everything. I think it, there's the support side of things that you're mentioning where we're seeing those being more prominent. I think we also end up noticing that there is a bit more of a factor when it comes to not just the supports, but also the items. I feel like a lot of items recently are coming in as either one, they're more mage oriented. A lot of amp items have been coming out or they're more tank oriented where they're just like pure tank. And there's not been a lot of bruiser damage items that have been prominently really strong recently. Yeah, I think we recently got one um, item, and I'll be real, I can't even really remember what it is. Um, it was the headpiece that gives Lich Grasp. Um, it has some attack speed, I think some defense and attack power. Yeah, but, but... Is that, even, but that wasn't even good. I don't think even like, I don't think, <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's a single character that picks it up. Um, I think Isaac was building it on the first day and then hasn't really built it ever since. Yeah. yeah it's uh, not seeing too much play. And that's kind of what I mean, right? Because like we have we have these other items that have been just really, really more prevalent. Yeah, but we actually do see a lot of damage coming out over to the, I think it was the Adela, just from this yawn. He's looking for so much more, getting a double knock up. Sadly, the knock back doesn't actually connect with the wall of the Tetragon because of the uh, the wall of the of the map, but we're just able to put so much onto people. Weaving in an extra auto between our abilities, going for that E, Q1, auto attack, Q2, and then while they're in Q2, maybe go for that auto attack into our glove skill. We're just putting so much out. And then the distance he can cover, going E over the fire, <laughs> over the fire truck, and then Q, like, I don't think that the Adela was expecting him from anywhere close from there. No, well, the other but... thing, too, is also that's really important is that he q one on the other side of the truck, then dashed over so that he had Q2 ready for the immediate knockup. Obviously, it didn't matter there because she blew up, but really important to kind of recognize that he was pre-prepping that knockup. Like, he was ready to be able to go CC chain combo her before even dashing over. Yeah, and we're seeing, like, in that fight... These, the ability for him to be rotating his E and Q, I think is what really makes a Yawn, uh, or I guess what really makes Yawn a character currently, as we have a lot of skill shots coming out in a lot of these fights. The Adela being a fully skill shot based character, um, as long as we're able to be dodging these, we shouldn't have to worry too much about how defend or how tanky we are because rather than just being tanky with stats, we're being tanky by just dodging all of the abilities coming at us. Yeah, plus also running Diamond Shard or D Shard is really, really, really helping that as well. We saw that there as he jumped in onto the Adela and did a bunch of damage at the beginning of that fight. He gained a bunch of defense from the D Shard and then was able to walk away from the impact and not take a ton of damage. Yeah, and I do also really like their comp getting out this uh getting the support and we're not really playing like front to back comp both of our i guess damage characters want to be going forward getting this johan in as well we're able to just set up ourselves so well as we just see so much mobility coming through dashing through the alonzo onto the uh, i'm forgetting her name katja um and once our engage wears out we don't have abilities up we're backing off waiting till we can get back in just using E into Q2, into E again, and we're unable to catch her, just come back to our team, start using the abilities over here. I think we were going for just E's into Q's again. I'm not really seeing too many W's come out, but well, it doesn't really look like they're needed. He doesn't need to be going for these stuns. 
Yeah, I mean, he, he tried to use a couple of them that didn't fully land. I mean, at the very end, he didn't get that last one where he used the bob and weave just to get that, like, extra distance to recorrect the position of his W to get that stun. But yeah, I think he's always just aiming for walls. He's like, even if it doesn't hit the target, he's always trying to at least go for that wall stun, get that value. Yeah. I do feel like if uh, if my Yawn used the W and knocked them away from my team and not into a wall, um, I might have I might have a few words to <laughs> to say to him. But it's just getting this effectiveness for actually getting the stun. If we're unable to get the stun, all we're doing is pushing them in a different direction. And if it's not into our team, then we are usually helping our opponent out. Exactly, exactly. The other thing I wanted to bring up about Yawn here is that another thing that's really important to like really enhance on this and focus on is these auto attack weavings. Because once you reach five stacks, your next ability that you press is enhanced, which is going to consume your stacks. So auto attacks are the only way to consistently start building up more stacks in between pressing your enhanced ability. So it's kind of important to kind of watch how he's been weaving these in. Yeah, we do actually get hit by the Lenore ult, just running away from our team so that we're not hitting them, as we do have a lot of damage coming from auto attacks, and our ult's coming out, knocking them into the wall. I think we caught the other Yawn, but we might actually get put on the floor. We're getting just so much CC coming through from Lenore and the enemy Yawn, and then Ekion ulting us right on top of that. It's really hard to play this fight out, but I think our last two should be able to do a lot. Sua has a lot of healing in her kit, then we have a Johan paired right beside. It's, uh, it becomes pretty hard for us to lose. Yeah, the, the problem of facing, you know, Sua, Johan, good luck trying to just out damage that healing source. Yeah, and I do think we were fighting an Ampion, which brings a lot more burst damage. And once our D shard runs out, it becomes very hard to be somewhat of a tank, especially if we don't have some of these items giving us our defense, as we do just get the auto arms online. Yeah, speaking of defense, you know, definitely playing a bit more of the bruisier side, grabbing that auto arms, getting the extra defense, some extra tenacity. But I mean, again, we're not we're not scared to be a damage dealer, though, because I mean, we're definitely still running some pretty heavy damage items. Yeah, I really love seeing the Omerta come out, the uh, getting attack power, defense, cooldown reduction. This item has been one of my favorites for a while. Oh, if only we had a Mai to give out eye. <laughs> Sadly, Mai would be maybe a bit too strong here. You know, we got to give the lobby a chance. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But we might actually catch a fight again with this uh, this Lenore team. I don't know <laughs> if they really want to take anything after losing the first time, but yeah, this the enemy Yon just press the ult, put the slow on the floor so that if they want to chase us, they have to walk through it. I think it's a forty percent slow. It's a, it's a lot, and yeah, you just end up wanting to uh, wanting to walk away instead of walking through both of the, or I guess maybe even all four if uh, if it's placed really well. No, the for rings. sure. I mean, he definitely panicked a little bit. He kind of, kind of was really scared the second he saw Yon and he knew his team wasn't around. He was like, "Yeah, no, I gotta get the heck out of here." <laughs> yeah, picking up this meteorite. I assume for our boots, going blade boots, really nice upgrade, direct upgrade from uh, White Rhinos. Um, has been buffed over the over the years. I know it's not the most popular item, but it is a very nice way to fit heal cut into your build, as it doesn't actually care whether or not you hit them with abilities or auto attacks. It's just hitting your opponents. Yeah, and it's definitely good stats for Yon. So definitely great, great item, especially because like heal cut I think is not appreciated enough. There are. A lot of times where I find that there's teams that are just lacking heal cut and with this current meta with a lot of healing supports being prominent right now, heal cut is more important than ever. Yeah, even just looking at this current lobby, like we have healing coming from the Echion, the Yawn, the Charlotte. I mean, if we stand in Kathy ult, then we've also got some healing there. Um, and then the Alonzo and the enemy, like there's two Yawns in this lobby. It's a... Uh, there's a decent amount of healing left in this lobby, and if we don't have this heal cut, we might just get out sustained. Plus, our team has three characters, all of which have ways to heal. Johan with his entire kit, Sua with her E, and Yon with his E. It uh, it makes you wonder 
why not just have y'all cut it? Well, exactly, yeah. I mean, this team right now is the prime example of why every other team wants to have heal cut. Like, you should have heal cut. You're never beating this team without heal cut. They have too much sustain, too much healing. We'll be able to just out stat check you if you can't reduce their healing. Yeah, but it looks like we might be seeing a fight here unless this team TPs away. Oh, yeah, I think they saw the pings in temple, decide it's just not worth fighting whoever's here, get out of here, and uh, just risk the TP instead. Yeah, really good call because you're going to be backed against the wall and the enemy team would have had vision here because of the cams. So you would have been really awkward if they forced you to fight at the corner edge of temple. Yeah, you will just get stalled out and uh, eventually lose to timer, which is very unfortunate. I wonder if we'll actually be seeing anything out come out, and anything else come out because we're already full build. So I don't know. Do we just save for blood? Do we get our Johan anything else? Oh, we will actually be getting him this mithril for the uh, forget the Cl uh, Cladog ring um, coming out for his arm piece. Yeah, the and... team's doing really well here, so definitely makes sense. Yeah, I think we're probably just going to see not much else go on. Um, they're in a really good spot, and they don't have to force anything. It'd be fun to see a, a few more fights, but just purely on the side of they want to win, I I don't think they have to go for anything else. No, especially with 13 team kills, definitely a pretty relaxed time where you're really just looking for placement at this point and playing position. But yeah, I'm, I'm also on the same page. Let's see some fights. Let's get some kills. I want to see some more yawn action. But as a macro yeah, decision, like... makes sense. Now they're in the same situation that the other yawn team was, where zone's about to change to red. They don't want to be forced into that red zone, so it's just better to TP out. It's a bit of a risk, but you'd rather go for that risk instead of being forced into a fight that you know you will not fight, or you know will not win. Exactly. I think we're going to get Blood Weapon online here. Really good upgrade for Yon. Um, I just don't know if he'll actually be switching to an upgraded version of it or not, because then he's losing that armor pen. Um, I think it goes from 12% to 7%, and if he's able to just jump on a backliner remove some of that armor yeah reduce some of that armor by a bit and usually go for a one shot as we saw him putting people to half health early game no exactly i mean i i don't even know how they got the blood did, did johan buy it uh i do think he bought it i think he had an upgrade oh okay gotcha yeah look at that damage though even with the charlotte stalling at the fight he does go down though uh, a little bit of too much focus just because he had to use a lot of his kit to try and take down the charlotte yeah, I see a lot of these fights are separated into Yon takes a fight and his other and uh, the Johan plus uh, Siwa take a fight. They usually jump into two separate fights, and I'm seeing that the enemy team will usually turn on the Yon first, as whoever the Yon is on is going really low, really fast. As that Charlotte dropped to like 30% health at the beginning of a fight, had to burn all, had to burn. Uh, heal wind just to make sure she could live and that's through also using her w and her e on herself it became such a big issue that she just has to ult and then during her ult the enemy team just completely turns on Aryan, and eventually he's going to be put on the floor but we're basically just forcing our team to free hit our opponents and kind of wins us the fight no for sure i mean I think it's really important because if you look at this team comp, the two priority targets, one is Johan. That would obviously be the target that you want to take down. And the next one would be Jan because Sua most likely is going to be the most sustained character on this comp being the most difficult to kill just because of how Sua's uh, flexible kit kind of works out. So because Jan is forcing these engages, forcing these fights and putting the enemy teams on the back foot where they have to react to your engagement, they don't really have the opportunity to try and dive Johan and the main reason for that is because Johan has so many good tools to be able to peel himself and keep enemies off of him so if you're already being jumped by the enemy and you're put into a back foot going on to Johan with less resources and him being able to stall you out will just end it so they have to go on to uh Jan at this point yeah and it looks like we're gonna get a free zone over here maybe a bit of time to just go and uh Talk about some either Yon specific or game specific things. Um, but 
Yeah, I will say one of my favorite things to see from Yawns are that they don't just jump in and go for this Tetragon combo every time. Um, we've been seeing that this Yawn doesn't always just instantly try and get on his target, knock up, and then throw the ult down. Sometimes he ends up going in, going for the knock up, back out, start weaving back in. Kind of feels like he's playing a fighting game where he's looking for his opportunities. And then once he's actually able to start that combo and confirm it's going to work, then he goes for the full thing. No, exactly. Oh, we actually get a TP in. Um, sadly, it's a solo. But I, I mean, good attempt from the Kathy though, taking that last second TP to the side where you know there might not be a team because you know there's a team on the other side. Just uh, unlucky for her that there is a team here. Yeah, I think at the time she was the Wick team as well when our Yon team fought, which was a uh, technically a bit of an uphill battle, but they were able to win it pretty hard and then. Now picking up the spoils of war, picking up the final cast after they wiped the rest of her team. Yeah, and it looks like they gave two of the blood weapon when they bought that blood. Now, funny enough, this is the rematch of the of the century here, as we do have the te the one team that did put them on the back leg, instantly blowing up the yawn. So we'll have to see how they do now. Yeah, I am assuming that we're going to see a bit more defensive play coming from our yawn, trying to find his opportunity onto someone and not go a bit too deep because i think that's what happened last time where he wasn't actually able to back up after he went for his combo but oh we're actually gonna get kind of juked out from uh this Echion taking the blast plant over but lenore is <laughs> on the floor from stew already we're just able to chase people around make sure that lenore has no backup and now the enemy on just can't do anything as he wasn't even able to press a button against us we honestly kind of out yawned him there yeah 100 percent out yawned him i mean this fight was 100 percent just on the poor play from lenore and the good play from sua but uh, yeah i mean he really just kind of pushed out the enemy kept a lot of pressure on the two front lines and then lenore just kind of got left alone in the point and sort of got taken down but i hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one